S&P rejects 4,500. NASDAQ retests its pivot. Apple gaps down only to gap fill. What small speculation index positions are telling us? What stocks to focus on tomorrow? Meta's direct threat. How ADP non-farm payrolls could be setting up traders for a bear trap. We have a lot to go over. Let's get to it. Hey everybody, welcome back. So we obviously all saw the ADP news today where the estimate came in at double. Showed this a little bit earlier. I'm just gonna show it again. See it right here, 497. They were actually looking for 220 and we came at 497, which is a absolutely huge number and something that we need to pay attention to. But is it really the end of the world? Well, in my opinion, it's really not but we're gonna get into that. Now, if we take a look at what's going on here, we're just gonna look at this on the hourly. You'll remember that we went through this earlier today. If you tuned in for the pre-market live, which we do every morning between 8.15 to 8.30, usually it's closer to the 8.30 level. I try to get in there, but sometimes it's, uh, it's a little difficult with the pre-market. So if we just take a look at how this is going, I mean, it's pretty clear what our level is. And then we broke out of that level and tried to regain it. Now. To be very clear, this number is not great. This is not a great number. So we shouldn't have, we should not really have gone up, but there's a couple things here that I think are really important. This is not a huge drop. In other words, what did you do? You really just came back down. You couldn't even get to this 4380 level. You came to this 4425. I, I think there's something to that. And I think that it's definitely something that we have to pay attention to. In other words, where's, where's the death and destruction that's supposed to happen? Where's this crash that everyone keeps talking about? I'm going to explain why it's not coming. And there's a couple ways where we could get one, a big pullback, but I don't see it until a couple of things work themselves out. I'll explain in a moment. But if we take a look at this, what, what, what happened today? We're down 80 basis points. You don't have $1.7 trillion in the market anymore. You don't have somebody that's going to go out there and buy bonds. We don't have those people anymore. Okay? You don't have a backstop. So what you're going to have is you're going to have efficient market. I, I laugh when I say it because nothing's efficient about this market. But you're going to have people that are going to say, I'm going to sell bonds here. Well, just because you're selling bonds here does not mean equities are going to go down. The people that are selling bonds might start buying equities. If you take a look at this, we're pushing 4% on the 10 year. And at the same time, Apple gap filled and then closed at a high of the day, encompassing the body of the previous day. So we actually made a higher high today when the NASDAQ was down 80 basis points, when S&P futures are down 80 basis points, Apple's up on the day and making a higher close. Does that seem like a market that's about ready to fall apart? I mean, if you were just to look at Apple and you're just to look at this from February on and you're gonna call the top, right? So you can't, I mean, you just can't. And I don't know how else to explain it to people. Will there be a top? Yeah, I'm sure at some point there will be a top. But this is more of a trap than anything else. And it's a real simple trap, too, because people are hung up on this ADP number. You know, there's a couple, a couple different data points that people that are hung up on this ADP that they have completely ignored. So this is investing.com. Anybody can use this site. And I just think it's, it's important for us to go through a couple things here. So let's just start with the basics. This is ADP non-farm employment change, okay? This is not BLS. In other words, this is not the Bureau of Labor Statistics. This is just ADP. ADP gets their data only from ADP clients. It's really important to remember that, okay? That's where they get all their data. That is not where BLS gets all their data from. Now, if we take a look at some of the other data points that came out today, continuing claims, yes, they were better than expected, but not by a lot. Jobless claims are actually up versus where they're supposed to be. It's nominal, but it's there. And then you start going through some of the other data points. Okay, services, PMI came in line, up a little bit. Non-manufacturing, business activity was up. What aren't we really seeing? And this is the one that I really wanna focus on is JOLT's job openings. So here we are, and we have ourselves in a position where we're talking about all these hires that are out there, but Jolt's Jobs is down. Now, Jolt's Jobs being down was the number that was driving the market down before, and all of a sudden doesn't seem to be doing that anymore. And coming in at this level, this 9.8 is under the 10. So just so we're clear, they revised this down twice. 
twice they've revised that number down. And here's a paper that was actually published by Interactive Brokers and they're using Bloomberg for the source of the data. It's about a year, year and a half old, but what it just shows is exactly what we're talking about. In red is non-farm payrolls, in blue is ADP. And you can see these differentiations, how they're not even close to each other. ADP uses ADP data only. BLS uses everything. It's really important to understand that. When, you, when he looked at the correlations, they were not there. So if non-farm payrolls comes in tomorrow weaker than ADP just came in, which if we take a look, has happened in the past, not once, but twice, substantially higher. If that happens tomorrow, you're gonna to see a rebound. So I don't see anything in the jobs number that would get me to think that this is gonna be a sustainable problem. In other words, jolts did not kick up where all these jobs are out there all of a sudden, where all these job openings are out there. And we didn't really see anything drop in claims. So I'm really curious to see what this number is tomorrow. I don't speculation play these numbers, but I will tell you this, that it is possible that if that number comes out and it's significantly lower, than what this is forecasting, that you're going to wind up seeing a nice rally in the market tomorrow. Clear, it's not speculation on what the market's going to do. I have no idea what the market's going to do. We don't know that. What I'm saying is I think there's an anomaly. I think too many people put their weight into that number today. And I don't think they fully understand how that number is calculated. You know, one of the things you'll learn on this channel, and I go over this all the time, you need to understand these calculations that people just rattle off. You need to understand how they come up with this data and what this data means. To me, this set up a, a beautiful trade because if I undercut here and I undercut this 4365, it's really hard for me to look at that and say, okay, well, I want to stay in this trade. That would be the first sign that we have a problem. So I get asked a lot, you're very bullish. If you were watching this channel 18 months ago, you know that wasn't, that wasn't the case. But I'm not bullish, I'm just trading what's in front of me. I would use this level and I'd watch that level very, very carefully. And if I break that level, I would probably think that we're due for another pullback. And I would assume that that pullback is going to at least be to something like here, 43.20, maybe we fill in that gap to 4,300. That is very realistic. If we look at the NASDAQ, I love bars like this because it gets everybody in, but they don't understand what they get everybody short, but they don't understand why it's not dropping. I'm going to explain in a moment why it's not dropping. So here's this bar. And what do we have? We have a wick. So what we want to do is we just want to measure that bar, the whole length of it and see where are we at? Okay. So we closed at 50%. That's about the least bearish of a bar that you can really get and still say that it's bearish right? Wicks are what? Price rejection. So we rejected this. So what did we really do today? We came back to the pivot and held. I'm not saying that we can't roll over. I'm, there's a lot of things that I pointed out yesterday that are weak, that are a concern, but your life is very easy here. This is a very simple spot for us to watch. All we have to do is watch this level. 14.8, we break that and it's SQQ season, right? It's time to start really looking at this and probably shorting some of the rally for short-term moves. Long-term, until we start seeing the cap X from these corporations into AI, until I start seeing that, I'm still leaning long-term. I'm not worried about this one day. Again, you don't have 1.7 trillion in the market. So the idea that we're gonna watch the bond market and go, oh, the bond market moved today. Really? I mean, if you, if you look at the bond market, right, and just kind of look at it like this for a moment, okay, and just take it in. Here's where the Fed was buying everything. Here's where the Fed stopped buying anything. Do, do you notice anything like crazy? This entire, this entire area, bonds hardly moved, right? We hardly moved up here. Why is that? Because the Fed was buying everything they could get their hands on to, quote, stabilize the market, right? And everyone knows that was out there trying to buy a house, how that went. Okay, so now they're not buying everything. So you're going to get volatility. Okay, and then eventually you'll revert to a mean and then you'll pick a trend. That trend will be up or will be down. Right now, high yield bond default rates are dropping, period. That's not conjecture. That's a fact. Default rates in the U.S. are dropping. If they're dropping, eventually high yield will be bought unless they keep raising rates over and over and over again. Then we have a bunch of issues. I just don't see them doing that. I think that they're probably going to wind up raising. It's pretty clear they're going to wind up raising. But... 
I don't see that them doing that. I don't see us breaking down. This is the same exact thing I said with tips yesterday uh, when we were looking at these, this iShare bonds of these treasury uh, inflation protection bonds. Okay, they're breaking down, they're going lower. Why are people selling tips? Why would you sell something if inflation is, is, is getting stronger? Right. It doesn't it doesn't make any sense. Right. Because all they're going to do is just go out and buy more tips. So you're just going to get the yield. So why would this be dropping less inflation's dropping? Right. It doesn't. Again, it doesn't make any sense. You can go back and take a look at when the bottom of this was in was going to be right around that October. Why? That's when CPI peaked. Right. And that was the bottom. Since then, you've had buyers. So until you break that CPI level in October, I don't really see an issue, guys. I, I really don't. And I think that people are grossly overestimating this as an issue. But, but this is a good thing because it gives us opportunity. For example, names like Apple. This was a great time to figure out who one of the top leaders are, where all the money's going. If you take a look at Apple, besides that beautiful chart, this is one that we're actually in and doing quite well with, we gap filled today. And then after the gap fill, they took everybody's money that, that didn't have a game plan. Right. And this is what they're going to wind up doing, guys and guys in the general sense. I, I want to be real clear about this. You're going to see a lot of games and they're going to be able to play a lot of games because you don't have a backstop in this market anymore. And I, I really want people to understand what that means. That means no one's out buying Apple bonds today. Only corporations are out doing it right now. OK, that means stocks are going to be more volatile. It's a good thing if you're a trader. So here you do. You have the run up the panic gets to the top and it's very clear what happens from here isn't it i mean it's it's not rocket science guys right gets right to that level clears everybody out all, eats up all that supply and rips you look at from the opening price after they took everybody out that has their stops here i'm going to just say something too you have to be real careful on the strategies that you're using from 2020 2021 where you're placing your stops, they're not gonna work the same way. They're just gonna stop hunt you, take your stock from you, and then just rip. It sells and buys. So you're gonna to have to really reevaluate where your stops are and why they're at certain spots. But if you take a look at this, this is clear as day. They kept it down here for a minute, made everybody panic, took all their stock from them, and it never looked back, right? This is one, this is one of the key things in understanding not only how to read price, so you can save yourself some money, but understanding why I have RSI up here all the time. If, if my RSI is at a nine or a 10, you're not getting my stock. You're not. You, you could bounce up to here where I get to that 50 level and then I might reevaluate and now you might get my stock and I may have sold for a loss there because I failed to break out, right? But you're not getting my stock here. Okay, when you, when you start taking out lower lows like here, right? And you undercut and rally, you're not getting my stock. So. I would strongly suggest you learn how to use RSI. People will say, oh, you can't just look at an indicator and determine when the bottom's going to be or where you might find uh, you know, some support. Okay, well, again, it's a poor craftsman that blames the tool. Learn how to use the tool, right? If you learn how to use this tool, your life will be a lot easier. I can't, I can't stress it enough. Okay? No one that was in Apple that was in our community today was panic selling this or should have been. I think I was abundantly clear. We were on the other side of these trades. Okay. When we were down here, I was picking off NVIDIA, right? On the bounce, I ran up and I wanted to hold and I'll walk you through exactly what they did to me. I wanted to hold, bounce here, I held up. I was up about $2, but I was trying to get this gap fill. And what, what I did was I got undercut. And as soon as I got undercut, I got washed out. And they took my stock from me, right? Now, they took my stock from me. I'm not happy that I, that I got out, but I had to set that level because it was early and I didn't know and I need to stop. So at that point, I had to do it. It was a lower low from this one. So it made sense to me, got out of the way. And then you know what I did? As soon as I got stopped out and it reverted and gave me another signal, I got back in. So I got stopped out here, okay? And then from my entry, I lost about a dollar and a half. And then I entered again, right, in, right around here. And then that was it, it was on. And then all I did all day was just watch it and just call out levels. And these levels were glaring. Now, why I have you, and I know this is a tangent, but you might wanna watch this a couple times because this is something that you could utilize and actually do yourself. You wanna find out where the inflection points are and where the lows were, okay? So here we are, 9.30 in the morning on that gap down, right? Right here, right? See that, okay? See that opening price right there? 
Okay, look at that opening price, 421. So you have from that low to that opening price, which is gonna give you a range, it's gonna give you a problem. As soon as I got up here, rejected, got up here again, couldn't hold, I reject, I trim that position, and then I move the stop to a lower low, which we haven't had. See how you haven't had a lower low? That's why I said you might wanna watch this again. And then I just move it to right to there. You can do this yourself, okay? You could do this yourself. And this was something that I pulled three and a half dollars out of why everybody else is out there trying to panic. Okay, you be proactive. That's all I can tell people is to, to learn this stuff and be proactive, right? It doesn't matter what the market does if you know how to act in the environment. That's all you have to do. Just learn what to do in different environments. And one of, the, one of the other key things that I think is really important for people to get is this when I'm talking about it. So this is something that the guys in the room and guys in the general sense, uh, there's a lot of girls in the room actually. So let me click off this earnings. I don't want to be staring at this. So this is something they've been playing for a while. I liked it. I've been mentioning this to these videos and that's why I always say subscribe to these. All these videos are linked. I follow everything that we do. Uh, you can always comment below if you want follow up on something. I'm actually thinking of doing like a Q&A night live every once in a while. I think that might be helpful. But if you take a look at this level in here, actually comment on that if you think that like taking questions would be a good idea, like one night a week. I'm thinking of doing that or one night a month maybe, something, something like that. Anyway, if you take a look at this, I was talking about this doji and I wasn't really crazy about that, right? But I did like the fact that it still made the higher high. Well, look at the volume. And then if you come here and take a look at your volume and you just drill across, and I'm gonna drop this here because I can't figure out and someone could always comment and tell me how to do it, but I'm not really that proficient in getting rid of this stuff over here. Uh, you see that level I just drew that just marks where the volume was today? See how the volume is greater than the breakout? Okay, the volume's getting stronger in the name. Now, Saturday I went through some of the fundamental reasons why I think this is happening. I just wanna point something out. This is the second highest volume that you've ever had in that name. You only have one day that's a little higher and that's when it went public, okay? That is not mom and pop that are deciding that they need to be in this, okay? They came out, they beat production, they have a viable vehicle that really has no competition, except if you want to wait for a Cybertruck and it's a completely different kind of vehicle. Cybertruck is a completely different type of vehicle than what they are selling. So as somebody that has been completely bearish on this name, I could say this is one of those companies where I've, I've absolutely changed my opinion about, about and I, I'm really starting to like what I'm seeing here. And again, do yourself a favor create a list, go through, go through all your names you watch today and find out which ones made higher highs and which ones finished green. They're the ones you're gonna to wanna to watch tomorrow, higher highs and finished green. So when you see something like this, I made a higher high today as the NASDAQ had a really bad day, right? We don't have leadership, we saw the socks, everybody saw this, but guess what we're not saying, right? We're not talking about, and nobody's talking about this, so we're gonna talk about it. Well, we're closing near the highs of the day. So I tried a little trade here and all it did was wash us out, try to rally, wash us out and then flip. Okay, and then you can see that level right there and that was it and then it was on. And then from there, it was just a absolutely perfect trade. Uh, you know, I'm sure somebody did it. I didn't do this. I was too busy with NVIDIA today. And uh, my pronunciation skills for commenting on it, you're just gonna make me laugh. My pronunciation's awful. You're just all gonna have to deal with it. So you could just see the higher highs, right? And then you start getting up there. I would not be sleeping on this, okay? I, I just wouldn't. I, I would not assume, let me show you this. Let's get rid of these drawings. I would not just assume that this weekly flag, this multi-weekly flag is just, just happens to be over and that we're sickly brilliant and we're gonna call the top. The amount of ego that's involved in that is just absolutely astounding, right? And this is something that I talked about a month ago and that's why I say all this is connected. This is where we trimmed in the room. And the reason we did that is because we were at that third standard deviation level. And third standard deviation means that you have about a 99.7% chance of staying in that range. Well, if I only have a 0.3% chance of breaking out of this range and I'm here, maybe you want to take some off the table, considering that you're very rarely ever going to see that, right? So then that takes us back to just the socks in general. And let's take a look at this. Does this look like something that we need to panic or get out of? Is there anything about that right? That is super negative. There's some things that are not ideal, right? So let's go through them. Let's get rid of this. 
Okay? We, could, we could make this argument. You could make the argument that that's a left shoulder. You could make the argument that's a head. And you could make the argument that's a right shoulder. You could make the argument that I've got a 20 or a 22, 12 cross, which is what I use right there. Okay? That is an argument. That is what's happening. Now, people will say it's not a head and shoulders because it's not straight. It doesn't need to be straight to be a head and shoulders. So everybody remember this is the socks for a minute. So then what you do is you just draw a neckline. Okay, well, we got to the neckline and we didn't break. So am I going to break or am I going to get a failed head and shoulders pattern and then rally? I don't have an answer for you. I do see this, okay? And I'll tell you where I don't want to be. I don't want to be in a position where semiconductors start breaking the 50 on the RSI. You will notice a couple things about charting. See this RSI right here? Note when the greatest move happened on the name from there over when we crossed the 50 line. Okay, note when the weakest period of time was in the socks during this whole move was when we broke the 50 line. Okay, I don't want to flip to possibly overbought to possibly oversold. Okay, and I certainly don't want to make a lower low. They're the things that I know that I don't want. So is everything rosy? No, it's not. And we need to look at that. But I don't think we're going to break down that much. Okay, I think that if you look today, you're going to see people getting very frustrated with their short sales. Now, Meta is one that we should talk about because a lot of people, including myself, I, we have a position in this and I added to it today. The fact that Threads added 10 million people in seven hours is beyond astounding. It took LinkedIn six months to do that. I mean, if, he obviously is going to be way more of a competitor than I thought he was going to be for Threads with Threads. So... I'm absolutely astounded by that. Technically speaking, you, you fill the gap. But I think this has massive, massive long-term potential now. So this is a name that I'm still looking at. We're long. Uh, we're not up, or I'm not up rather, on the ad, but I'm up on the other portion of it. And I don't see how we're not getting up into here and starting to play with these levels eventually. I just don't see it. He's got a completely different growth driver now than he's ever had before. And once he starts getting more and more people over there, I also think Elon going after him I don't think was the, the brightest move, quite frankly, but what do I know? Maybe there's a real reason for it. So if you take a look at Meta and you look at what's going on out there, you take a look at Bitcoin and we look at what's going on out there. Okay, well, there's my first crack on Bitcoin. So now I'm below what? The 12. Okay, well, I haven't been below the 12 since this move. So that's something else that I want to pay attention to, right? Am I going to start rolling on Bitcoin? Am I going to backfill? I don't have an answer. I will say this, that these names are holding up exceptionally well. Mars holding up exceptionally well. MSTR exceptionally well. Look at this. Look at that level. So what, when we keep selling down and then bouncing, keep selling down and then let's clean this up. Keep selling down and bouncing, even though we're trapped in here between the 22 and the 12 right now, right? And we have that lower low, which I am not crazy about at all right here. I don't like that, but it's there. Okay, and you start going through these and going, well, this is kind of overextended. You could easily come back down to 260. But you start going through these and you start looking at them and going, okay, well, I see these signs of it, but why aren't we cracking? And that's, that's the important part of this. Why aren't we really cracking? So this is the small speculation index position. Small spec positions are speculators under 20 billion. Now, why is this important? This is important because it lets us know what they're doing. Now, for everyone that hasn't seen this chart before, this is something we've been looking at for a while. This green line right here okay, is telling you when you're net short. All right. So just so we're clear, this point right here and this point right here, small speculators that were managing investment funds under $20 billion were more net short the market than they were during the pandemic. OK, you're still net short. You're not net long, you're still net short right here. So now if you take a look at that and go, all right, well, we're still net short. That must be a pretty common occurrence. Okay, that's 15 years. Okay, that's 20 years. Okay, that goes back 40 years. That's all I have. That's as far back as I can go. And if you look at that, that's all I have. So if I look at that, I'm still net short. How, for how many years were we net short? Like it, it defies logic. So. I would argue that, yeah, you want them to go net long. You're not going to have panic in the market. You're not going to have massive selling in the market, okay, until you are net long. If you were net long and you were up here, then I'd be looking at this and saying, oh, yeah, this is an issue. Yeah, we could have a problem here. This could get super ugly. Yep. But if you're net short, what's happening is every dip, 
they, ha they have to cover. Okay? You're going back five years and you're looking at where you are net short. It, you're still significantly more net short than you've been at any time in the past five years, even now in the last data point, which was the end of June. So if I'm still net short, where are, where are all these people that keep talking about, oh, you know, everybody's fully invested? It's just, it's not an accurate statement. This is Sediment Trader. It's a service I actually pay for the service. It's actually very good if you're into this kind of information. So I'm not going to do smart money, dumb money, but I just want to really hammer this point home. I want to just focus on smart money. So I'm breaking it out. And we're looking at 20 years here. But what we're going to do is we're going to just focus on a year. So we can see right here, right now, that over the past 12 months, that smart money is down here. It's in the worst bearish position that we have been in in 12 months. Okay, let's go out three years. Okay, so in three years, we're here. Well, when was the last time we were down at this level and then cross back over the zero line? Okay, the last time we were down at that level right here was going, is going to be here. Okay, that's the last time. So if I look at that and then say, okay, well, what happened to the stock market during that period of time? And I align perfectly with it, right? Okay, that seems like a pretty good place to be involved. No, it's not the same before you comment below and tell me it's not the same. I know it's not the same because we don't have 1.7 trillion, but this is all I have. So I have to work with what I have, right? So then I go back and I say, okay, well, let's look at five years, all right? And then take a look at the scenario. Now, no one knew this pandemic was coming. So here you are, you have your move and then you left. And so this is very difficult to play because you don't know, you have nuances there, right? But you look at the undercut and then the rally, undercut rally, every single one, what happened? We went higher. Well, you're gonna say that's the pandemic. So let's go out 10 years. Okay, okay, what happened? We undercut here and then lifted. Well, we went higher. Okay, so let's just kind of zoom in on that for a moment right here and take a look at that and say, okay, we went higher, right? We went higher here. Everybody sees it, I'm sure. So now if we look at that, let's go back a little further. See if we can find more examples of this. Well, here's one, okay, that's 2012. 2012, look what happened, okay? Let's go here, okay? You can see it over and over and over again. I mean, it's it's pretty, pretty telling stuff. Is it gonna be perfect? No, nothing is. But if you just keep drilling back through the years and you're looking for examples, and we'll squeeze this down a little bit, Okay, and here's one, 2005. And we can see that example right here, okay? And you can see what happened in the market. It did nothing but go higher. It's really important to get that concept and to understand what you're looking at. You don't have that 1.7 there anymore that's gonna come into the market. You do have some negativity in the market that you need to be aware of. I'm fully aware of looking at the SOX and that it looks not great. I'm fully aware of looking at LAM research and I, I fully see this undercut right here. Right, that's not what I want to see. Now I'm struggling with what? The 22, I, I don't want to see that. I don't want anything to do with that, right? I don't really want to see ASML below the 12 and the 22 and across and see it breaking the 50. I don't want to see any of that, but it doesn't matter what I want, right? I have to trade what's in front of me and this is what I have. So what I would do is I would go through your list of names just like I did and I would find the ones that hit higher highs today and they would be the ones that I would focus on tomorrow. And I would watch the non-farm payrolls data very closely. And if you see a discrepancy, we'll be live tomorrow for it. If you see a discrepancy in that data where it comes in better than expected, lower than expected, you're gonna see a nice move in this market, in my opinion. That's it.